or not use it. I will I will show you both the ways. Okay. Hello everyone. Welcome to Indo-Indians art class with Pavan Kapoor. So it is the time for Christmas and make your Christmas very special for your special people by hand painting your Christmas cards with them. And Pavan Kapoor, our artist resident in Jakarta, will be sharing how to make the perfect Christmas card, which are easy to do, but have that impact, the pop of color, which are so Christmassy. Pavan Kapoor is an artist living in Jakarta and she also does uh, art classes on Skillshare, even on Udemy. So if you want to learn more from her, you can always find her on Skillshare and Udemy. And she's been very generous with her time and she's here and with her knowledge and art skills, which she's happy to share with all of us here at Indo Indians. Hi Pavan, thank you. How are you? It's good to be here and uh, share my passion, which is uh, basically painting. And today we're going to be doing this uh, cute little image. I thought this is so unresistible, irresistible, sorry. And Very beautiful indeed. Everyone would like to, uh, you know, paint and it's easy. The beginners just um, dive right in. Very cheerful. Very, very cheerful. So I hope you have uh, sketched out your image on uh, the paper which was suggested which is watercolor paper uh, so before we start i can uh, give you a, a few pointers on what sort of materials are good for watercolor painting so i think the most important thing is uh, watercolor paper you need a thick 300 gsm watercolor paper and uh, even something like 220 would be fine for beginners and then you need uh, your paints, which doesn't have to be artist grade. Student grade is fine too. There are good and bad, uh, good and not so good brands. So I can guide you on that. And then we have our brushes. You know, these are your mop brushes. You have the angular brush and uh, all sizes for different uh, styles of work. So today, uh, I had asked all of you to keep a little uh, wax, piece of wax, a candle with you so that we can uh, uh, do a little wax resist. Uh, and uh, Puna, maybe we can go down to our... Sure. So as you can see in our image, uh, we have so much of white, you know, the tip of the nose, the glint in the eye, the button, the shine on the button. So all these are so important to be kept white. And sometimes, you know, we just in our uh, passion for uh, laying down the color, everything gets covered. So there is a way to keep these. So one is a masking fluid, which is expensive. I wouldn't ask my beginner students to buy. And the alternate for that is candle wax. So let's go down and just put in some candle wax in the area where you see the white on the hat, a little bit on the nose, just in the corner of the nose, and uh, the buttons, you know, because this area is not going to be covered with your paint, and uh, you will have those white areas left out. Okay. So that's it now and let's get started with the topmost part which is the hat. I'm going to be mixing some dark grey. So the thing about watercolors is you never start with totally you know, dark. The first layer is just placing your colors in to know what lies where. So this is actually a student grade paint uh, box of mine called uh, Koi Sakura. I do have my Winsor and Newton also, which is an artist grade material. And between the two of them, I'm going to find my shades. I have my palette 
uh, okay one thing about palettes uh, don't use the plastic ones because you know you get beading in that you need ceramic palettes i can't show it to you because it's out of the thing but you need ceramic just take small ceramic bowls and mix in your color and you see how it just so it stays on in plastic it will create a bead so let's start with the hat with a grayish base now what i usually do is pa paint the base with water first but in this case because our gray is so light i'm just going to lay it down as the base and leave that white portion try to leave that white portion and that's it so we will come back and paint this again in the second layer i hope it's clear punam now we have it's fine it's fine your uh, it's very clear and your audio is very clear as well so i'm going to put some candle wax on this part you know where the hat is again white here okay so again we go down and put in our grays at the base just paint the hat a light gray color and we'll come back in later and put in our darker shades so the thing about watercolor painting is you cannot go back and get your whites again so the first layer is all about keeping your whites and not covering them up with the paint and that is why you approach the first layer very cautiously okay and now let's do the snowman part while this is drying let's mix in a uh, blue take take your prussian blue it's called prussian blue which is a mixture of gray and blue so you get this very light now again this is our first layer so we are going to get this bluish shade try to get a nice blue light blue mix a lot of water and take a large brush so i'm going to move to my mop brush this is a large brush which holds a lot of water and now we're going to lay down water on the body of the snowman just lay down water leave the buttons white leave the hands white this is actually such a simple project i'm sure you'll be done in no time and you'll be ready to paint something else with me i have another project ready in case we finish in time so if you have your water down on just one section of the body probably the lower part because try not to make puddles just try to have a smooth smooth out the water and then you go in with your blue and place it there is more blue on this side because this seems to be in the shadow right just place it and now we do the tissue technique where we just go in with our tissue and dab it a little bit from here and there to give that soft snowy effect and the same thing we do we're not going to paint the whole body blue just the outsides right just the outside near the buttons because that seems to be the shadowy area i have one eye on my reference image which is you know very important to be as close as you can to your reference image and then of course i always go in and add my own twist now i have laid in my blue what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my gray and place some gray here because that's where the shadow lies and let it flow 
that's the magic of watercolor where you just put in your colors and watch it flow. So can you see that I have got this shadow here just by dabbing in some gray. And I again go with my tissue and give the gray a little dab to give it that soft cotton woolly snowy effect. Now I think our first layer is done and we can always go back and darken it in the next layer. The side of face of the snowman is also in shadow. The rest of it seems quite white. The shadow is on this part. So we go ahead and we just place some blue, light blue paint here. Um, yes. Uh, Any do you mind like, explaining the, the bottom part again? This part? Yes. So you see, to get the cotton woolly snowy effect, we lay down a very light blue and then dab it up with your tissue. Yeah. And then you put in gray, again, a very light watery gray. I have mixed my gray and blue in two pots. Okay. Okay. So it has to be very watery. If it's dark, then it doesn't look soft. And you might just go wrong and you might put in too much paint. So the first layer is always very, very light. And after this, we can go back and do our another layer of a hat. Let's take in a darker layer of gray, almost black, because the hat is black. Should I, should I slow down? Yes, miss. Okay. I can't see what you're doing. That's why I... Um, would, you, would you like to show yours, Advik? Yeah. Let me... Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. that's good, that's good, yeah. yeah okay, that's, just keep it like that so I know where you are. So now very water, take a smaller brush. I think you have a very large brush. Take a smaller size brush. Yes, yes, perfect. And just lay water down first. The important thing is to lay water down. I think blue, right? Oh, uh, blue, right? Blue, yeah. See, I'm, I'm doing the second layer so that you can. Thank you. So lay the water, the water down and then put in your blue. Okay. okay. Cool. And then take your gray and place your gray on the sides just to give it that darker look, you know, just a little shadow. Oh, is this much blue enough? Like, I'm going to make it more yeah, lighter. Right, very good. Have you put water down first? Yeah. Place water down so that it flows. Yeah, the whole, the whole body. Cool. And then we go back to the hat and we can Give it a darker black tone. Now this is watercolor. What looks good in watercolor is the flow of color. So you don't need to uh, have very flat colors. And if you if you want to give your shade, get your shading in, you just take a clean brush with water on it. Nina, you know this, I've repeated this so many times with you. And you just put the clean brush on top. This is the lower part of the hat. So usually one would do about four to five, four to five uh, layers in a painting. But uh, because this is a short class, 
I just try to finish it in two layers. And yeah, and we go on with our darker and darker shades. Keep darkening the hat till you get the color you want. Yeah, and you have that little white portion here. So we leave that white. You have the candle wax, so it's not going to come on that part. Did you manage to put your candle wax? Leave out the green leaf. So there is this magical thing called ma masking fluid, which uh, if you're seriously thinking of learning watercolor painting, I would always advise you to buy. It masks off the area you want to leave white. Okay. Now we can get down to our eyes. Let's do the eyes, leaving that white part. If you are satisfied with your, uh, the blue of the face, if you have, if you are sure it's uh, what you want it to be, yeah? Or let's let's do the uh, cheek, the red cheeks. Take a bit of red, very light red. Okay, we don't want very dark, and and just let's give those lovely dimples some rosy. We have a healthy snowman here, and just lay down a very light round. You can go back in and drop some more color inside to make it darker. And we do the same with the nose. Be sure to leave the nose a part of it white. I have put in my candle wax, so I'm not worried. I know I will have a white shine on the nose. So there you go. And now we can do the red berries because they're the same color. Make sure you leave the white shine on each berry. There you go. And the nose, you can put a bit of yellow on one side because it's it seems the sunlight, the, the weak winter sun is coming from the left. That is why all the shadows are on the right. And this seems to be where the light is coming from, from this side, okay? Now you can mix in some uh, cadmium red, which is basically your chili red. And let's, uh, start with the scarf okay now the scarf again it should not be a very dark red we are going to put in the first layer the first layer is again light so that you have your Okay. 
है put in your light red try to leave a few white marks here and there and let's do the same it's the same so when you're not sure we just are putting in our first light layer and the second layer will have the darker shade where you can go in and layer the darker colors of your so you see you, nothing is one color when you observe any object you will notice that light plays a very important role let's do the hand again i'm not going in and doing a very dark color because this is actually safe because you have mostly it's a flat color go back in and cover the whole hand tell me to slow down guys if i'm going too fast um okay and then we have this hand try to keep within your pencil marks try not to go outside so you have to be careful that the body of the snowman is dry before you go in and paint because otherwise the red will just bleed into your blue snowman you see so this part has to be dry so pavan ko quick question if they do if it doesn't dry if it is very wet do you use like a, some drying thing the an equipment Dry fast, or you wait. Go and have a snack. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so yeah, so if you feel it's not dry, you can just wait for some time. Mm. In the meantime, while you're painting, I'm for those who are with me, I can show you some of the workshops I've done. I've done these uh, Santa hats, which again, you know, show you the soft cotton woolly effect. this i have used acrylic to get the cotton wool effect sometimes watercolor needs a bit of help when you use acrylics or you use your digitals and then you have these baubles here which i think last year i did some baubles yes, you did this with us last year so i have drawn some out in case we have time sure maybe we can check with our little participant advik uh nina magdalena how they are doing hello everyone how are you doing advik uh, not so good like it's not turning out good oh. it's not turning out good don't worry about it it's um, i can't see it if i could see it probably probably like if i put the camera down i can't see what's going like how yeah. it's going you want to hold it up for me uh i cannot um, means this is advik can you hold it up please uh, i don't know it's like a book type you are printing the book okay uh a little little lower yeah it's okay it's fine it's fine you know what i suggest you do you take a tissue and dab the snowman's body dab it so that it's more white okay Actually, my white is already destroyed. I put. I wish my blue one. I can't take out the white color now. Probably you can. That is that is why watercolor painting is considered to be a little. Okay, Baba. Also, um, I kind of don't have a white color paint, so I can use the one with. 
we don't use white paint in watercolors. We don't use white paint. We leave the paper white. So, uh, you, do you want to put some water with your brush on it and try to pick up the gray paint? Like, you know, just, just take a clean brush and try to pick up the gray paint and then dab it with a tissue. Amit, I don't have the, uh, that, co that color thing you have. I have only the simple color. Yeah, it's okay. It's fine because we just need gray and red and black, which every palette has. I'm also using a very simple color. I mixed it with white to make it a grayish type. Oh, I think that was the mistake. Oh, you did. Okay, okay. So what you need to do is you need to just put the gray on the sides, the blue and the gray on the sides. All right. Doesn't matter. Now that you know, uh, probably the next one you can make is, uh, you know, you can fix it. In the so Pavan, this is a very good uh, place for me to ask you a question regarding the color white yeah. in watercolor. Because all the palettes that we buy generally have the color white. Yes. And it is the most unused color in the palette. Yes. And can you just say a few words about white and <laughs> when can it be used in watercolors? Uh, so basically, I never use white. I never use white. The whole uh, thing about watercolors is to leave your white highlights out. You have to plan your work. So I tell all my students, Tell me how are you going to approach your project, you know? How are you going to start? Which is the color you're going to start with? What are the parts you're going to leave white first? There's a bit of planning. You just don't go in directly because then you could make the mistake of covering your white and that is irreversible, you know? Right. So you need to leave your whites out and paint around it. And uh, that is something which is... Uh, what watercolor is all about that is why it's a little hard but what nowadays is happening is the watercolor is everything is so digital you know all the art is so digital it's being sold digitally so there's a lot of enhancement happening on digital uh, apps like procreate yeah and, um, it's not i used to for the longest time i used to consider this bit cheating to fix my watercolors on uh, you know uh, apps such as Photoshop or Procreate, but even the the greatest of watercolorists do that now. You know, they enhance it if it is not to be sold or to be printed. If it, if you're selling your art as is, then you can't do anything digitally. Uh, I'm see the painting again. Like you want to see the image again? Okay, here you go. Uh, Poonam, can you uh, put it on the screen, actually? Uh, it is on the screen. Uh, okay. Oops. I mean, share screen with this image so that it's always there. Uh, then it'll have to be on um, in another camera. Okay, can you see it, Advik? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, thanks, Pavan, for that little uh, understanding on white paint and watercolors. Okay, so let's let's not overwork our uh, snowman. I think the the light. Uh, uh, Nina, I think you can give it a little more shadow at the base. Put in your water again, wet it again, and just put in a bit of gray so that you know you have the you have the shadow. Yeah. And then let's finish our muffler. I'm gonna do my second layer now. So the second layer it's darker here in the center where the fold of the muffler is, and there's a darker layer here at the base, you know. And there's a shadow here where the knot comes. So there's another darker layer. So what I've done is I've just taken a more pigment, more red, and mixed a little bit of gray in it to make it darker. And then this is, this is where you have holes of the muffler, the shadow coming in. 
it has a sort of a crisscross thing here. Just make sure you have. So you don't paint. Everything has two, three shades, two, three colors in it, and that's the effect you need to get. Let's let's do his mittens together so that you're not lost because let's do his mittens together. Take a lot of red paint and mix just a bit of black in it, very little black. Don't make it like a black maroon, but it should be it should be something like this, like a dark red. Okay. And let's do his mittens. Now you see the mittens. This part is almost black. So we'll make it this dark green. And then it has this line here. And it has this shadow here to give it the rounded effect. Okay. So what makes watercolor paintings good are the shadows, you know? And once we give this snowman a shadow on the snow, you'll see. Let's do the second mitten. Just keep your dark colors very minimal, very, take your smallest brush Okay, and if I want to draw this out and I don't want such a hard edge, I've just washed my brush in some clean water. I just, I just wash it off. Let me try to bring the water in. I just wash it off. I dab it on my tissue and I bring and I make a line so that the edge is not harsh. That's it. Now I think the nose needs a little dark shadow. The same, this. So let's, since the light is coming from top, the bottom part needs to have a shadow. Great. And our little cherries also. Let's give them a shadow on only on one side. And this little piece of muffler peeping out from the back. So you can make the tassels also a dark red color. Can you see how fast we're progressing? This little part of the muffler also needs to have a shadow because it's hiding behind the knot. So make sure your whole muffler is not one color. Okay. Keep that cheerful red color so that, you know, if you have lost it, just do a few areas red in between. So now we have about four to five red color shades in our painting, in our uh, muffler. And yet it's not a one big blob of red. There you go. And even the nose, keep that bright red, the cherries. If you have lost that red, go back in and cover them up, but make sure the white highlight and the darkest of uh, shadows is still there. Okay, good. I'll stop, I'll pause for a bit till you catch up and then we can do the finals, which is the 
green, the eyes, the button, and then we go down and do the snow. Or should we do the snow first because that takes time to dry? As you can see, see this part? It has a snow. Now, how are you going to paint this? You're going to put water down first. Advik, how are you going to paint the snow? You're going to put water down first and just put blobs of blue, okay? Did you have a look at the, did you have a look at the image? Can you see the image? Can you hear me? Nina, can you hear me? Just give me a thumbs up. Okay, now we're going to do the uh, shadow together. Don't attempt it first. Let's do the shadow together. So I'm going to take clean water. Advik, maybe you want to do this with me. I'm going to take clean water and just put it a little on the side here and a little on the side here. Just clean water. Then I go back and I take my blue. Remember the blue we had made? I'm just going to drop it in to give the shine. If you feel it's too much blue, just take your tissue and dab it to give that soft effect. So less is more in this. Okay. Dabbing for a few dark blues and a few light blues. Just make sure it all is spreading in the water. It should not be sitting there. And now with this dark blue, which is on my brush, I'm just going to give the snowman a little outline only on the left side and probably here because that's it. Since I have a shadow here, I don't need to do that, okay? There you go. Now the fun part where you take some of your glue and let's give it these um, splatters. Can you see these splatters? Here. Yeah. So that is, needs a bit of work. Just maybe you need to cover your Cover your snowman and then just go once or twice. Pavan, do you actually splatter it or do you just touch your brush briefly to the no, page? I cover my snowman so that it doesn't come on the snowman and you can take another pen and you know. Oh, go. I see. Okay. I just want it very little. Yeah. I don't want too much. I I can always go in with my very light brush and create some more snowy looking things. So this is a little mistake. It's too dark. My my snow has come out too dark. So what I'm going to do is I'm just taking my tissue and dabbing it a bit, and there I go. I get the light blue which I want. And. Now for the eyes and for the buttons, if you are, if you don't have a very tiny, tiny brush like this, you know, 
it's okay. You can take your pen. Do you have a micron pen or any other pen? So you take your micron pen and we can give the eyes a definite outline so that it's neat. I would go in and do it with a brush. I'm leaving the white I'm gonna go in and do it with a brush now. Now that I have left my white, I know that the, the glint of the eyes is safe. But if you do cover it, if you do cover it, take, a, if you have a white Posco or something, a white Posco pen, you can always go back in and, uh, you know, shade it. Should we, I think we forgot to do the buttons. Let's go to the buttons. And they're a nice, make sure you leave the white space around the glint, where the glint is. I had put in some candle wax, so that wherever I have put in the candle wax is resisting the paint. So I have my natural Highlight. There you go. So the thing with candle wax is that watercolor won't come on top of it. So you have to be very careful. It has to be a sharp candle wax. And if you do make a mistake, you only can cover it up with an acrylic. So give it a dark red shadow at the base. If it's still wet, you can wait for it a bit. And this dark shadow which you give is so beautiful because it just pops everything to life. I'm going to, since I have it on my brush, I'm just gonna go back in and give all my shadows another sort of a layer. So the thing is contrast. You have to create contrast. And here we go. Let's do the green. I'm going to be uh, mixing a bit of yellow and green. Um, change my water, the clean water, and I'm taking some yellow. Yellow and a bit of my olive green and just creating the base, a light base for my leaves. All the three leaves, you can just give it a very light base and then we will go back in with our shadows. So be neat. At this point, you need to know where your leaf is ending and where your hat is starting. Okay. 
We're almost, I think we're about 80% done. Did you give the tassels a little round base? little dots at the end of the tassel. Okay. And now we can do the face, you know, the smile of the snowman. I'm going to go back and do that with my micron pen. Just so that it's one straight happy line. Now, I think your mural is done, except for the green of the leaves. Let's go in with the sap green, which is your Sap green is your leaf green, basically, and this is what sap green is. It's, see, the green we used earlier was like a light green, and now we are going to go in and use sap green, which is usually there in most palettes. So, we're going to give it more shadows on this side because your leaf is in shadow on this side. So what do you think? Are we done more or less? If you feel you have covered up too much, you don't have enough, take your uh, POSCO or any other white uniball pen and just give your... It's looking very beautiful, Pawan. So it's very nicely explained and the snowman, you know, especially the sh shadow at the bottom of the snowman makes it look so round and just like a snowball. So the last bit will be just to go back and, uh, you know, darken the Areas where you feel the snowman needs a little uh, form, you know, like this part. Now, this is so totally white. So, I'm just going to give it a little outline, not very dark, otherwise, it looks stiff. Outlines make it look stiff. You can go back inside and write a nice message, Merry Christmas. You could do a small uh, little, um, it's just a freehand sort of, a, you know, a pine tree. You want to, do you want to join me to make the inside first? 
let's make some little berries inside the card so that because people know that it is your art and you can even put in something very personal inside what the person you're, who you're giving this card to you can put in a personal effect whatever the person likes could be a teddy bear could be a this is giving these turns and you can go back in and draw a few berries inside i think that's a very very nice touch pavan yeah just 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 to make it feel personal you know that's beautiful it really personalizes and completes the entire card and um, we have only 2 minutes left pavan so we can so so um you can send me your work and i can give you suggestions i offer whatsapp support for maybe a day or two after the yeah in fact i would really like everybody to just hold up what they have painted so far wow nina i can't see yours super nice beautiful thank you advik did you enjoy the class nina that's really beautiful yeah let's come up okay can you hold it up one more time please everyone just hold up your cards hold it closer to the camera yeah <laughs> thank you I'm disappointed that's come out beautiful yeah it's very nice thank ah. you that's lovely thank you so i hope all of you enjoyed the class and uh, especially pavan i think you taught it so beautifully and you taught the various little trips tips and you know the ways to paint it perfectly that was a really really nice way that you have shown us how to paint the christmas card how to use watercolors effectively especially use little tips like using 